What's up OBS Ninja fans? Are you looking for a way to deploy OBS Ninja on AWS? Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get it done in some quick, easy steps. If you're interested in seeing more about OBS Ninja, don't forget to take a look at my playlist here. Imagine yourself having your own deployment of OBS Ninja on AWS controlled by your DNS. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and smash that notification button. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna outline the steps that we're gonna take in order to get this installed. Everything that you see on my screen right now are the AWS steps and then the install steps. We only have like 11 steps on the install of the instance itself. Let's get started here in our AWS console. First, I need an elastic IP address for my VPC creation for the NAT gateway. I need to associate and actually create one. It's really quick. Underneath the AWS console, EC2, we're going to elastic IP address down here. Associate, and we'll do an Amazon pool of IPv4 and allocate. Now that we have the IP address, let's create our VPC using the wizard. Underneath the VPC, if you hit the VPC dashboard and launch the wizard, I like to do a public and private IP address for this. If you're not gonna use the VPC other than for the OBS Ninja deployment and then destroy it, you can go with a single public subnet, but if you wanna keep it later on, it just makes things a little bit easier because it's already provisioned for you. Under public and private subnets, I'd like to give it a name. For the purpose of this, I'll name everything like OBS, OBS Ninja. I typically don't change the availability zone for any of the subnets. I just let it assign automatically. But if you want to have it in a specific availability zone, feel free to do that. Underneath Elastic IP Address Association, we can select one of the IP addresses that we have there or the recent one that I provisioned. This is the most recent one. And I'll click Create VPC to get things started. While this is installing, I'll pause the video and then we'll continue. Now that our VPC has been created, underneath our EC2 instances console, I'd like to deploy out an Ubuntu image. Click on launch and let's walk through that process and what it looks like. Here we're using Ubuntu and search for this. And I'm just gonna select the first one and for the purpose of this tutorial and to keep things a little bit on the lighter side, you can use the free tier. It'll work, no problem. I typically like to do a T2 large, but these are general purpose ones. So you might wanna pick something for a little more performance if you would like, if you're gonna keep it up and running and have a lot of people on it. But this is really easy and I'll show you it works. We'll configure our instance details underneath the VPC. Don't forget to select OBS Ninja Test. And the subnet where we're deploying this needs to be in the public subnet because it needs to be accessible. And I want a public IP address to it because that's how we're gonna connect and we'll update our DNS. No other changes on this. You don't need to make any modifications to storage. I will add a tag just so that you see the name of the instance and it doesn't come up blank. Name, OBSN, test. For security groups, you need port 80 and 443 open to anywhere, but I also will have SSH enabled to do the configurations isolated to my IP address. Change this to my IP address, which will be blurred out. Add a rule for HTTP. and then add a rule for HTTPS. We'll review and launch this. And I already have a key pair created specifically for this event. You can create a new one and don't forget to follow the steps to grant permissions for it. I acknowledge and I'll launch the instance. At this time, I'm gonna pause the video. Once the instance is launched, we'll do the remaining of our steps for AWS. Now, while our instance is being launched, let's configure DNS 
to work with this instance so we can go to, you know, how you go to obs.ninja. This one's going to be obsninja.theawsblogger.com. Now, I have went ahead and I have my own hosted zone here on this site, and I'm just actually going to go to the A record and show you how that's configured. That will give it a chance for DNS to update, so when we go to test this out, it'll work. If you're under your instance, I'll move this up. We're going to select the public IP address, and under Route 53, I'd like to actually name this OBS Ninja, and it'll be the awsblogger.com, and drop that IP address in. That's it. Now that our instance has been launched, let's SSH into it. Underneath the EC2 console, if you click on the instance and hit connect, this is one of the features I really like about AWS is that they give you all the steps on how to connect to your instance using SSH or if you're using Windows RDP. Underneath the SSH client, it has a kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to connect. If you're using Mac, here's what you wanna do is Chamode 400, your PEM file to make sure you give it access. I've already done that. And you connect to it using the public IP address or what you're gonna do underneath here is SSH to it. Let's select that and open up our terminal. All right, now that I'm connected to the Ubuntu instance, we need to do a couple of things in preparation for it. Let's go back to our list and the steps, the 11 steps that we're gonna take in order to get this done. Clear this first. Right here, I will copy these. It's much easier just to copy and paste it in there. We're gonna do an update and then we're gonna do an install Nginx. Clear the screen, install Nginx. Yes. The next few steps here are for Snap. Snap's gonna be utilized to, for the certificate and we're just gonna install that locally and it's much easier to configure. Do a clear. I'll come back, we'll do the certificate. Don't worry about all these commands. I'll drop them down in the description below along with the steps so that you can follow along and do this on your own. You might not have to sit there with the video, but I advise you to follow the video just a little bit further to see some of the gotchas that we're gonna go through. We'll install just a classic certificate. Once that's been installed, we'll do a quick sim link. Next, we need to configure the Nginx certificate to work with obsninja.theawsblogger.com. We're back to our step-by-step -step that needs to be done. Copy, and let's drop this in here. I'll give it my email address because if your certificate does expire or it's coming close to expire, it's nice to receive the email. After that, do I accept the terms? Well, yeah, I don't have a choice. And no, I don't want email on it. Okay, at this point, we need to enter the domain name that's gonna be tied to the certificate that will work for it. This is the part where it comes critical that you opened up 80 and 443 to communicate and DNS is working. If you get any errors, make sure you can do an NS lookup on the DNS. And let's see if this works, performing it, waiting for verification, and then it's cleaned up. Now, I don't have any errors on this whatsoever. That means it went through and DNS is working successfully. Now, the next step, let's get OBS Ninja installed. Quickly clear my screen and back on our document, cd to www.html, that's where we're going to do the install. And don't forget to do a sudo git because that's typically the issue that I run into and install OBS Ninja. While that's installing, I'm gonna in CD to the Nginx sites that are enabled. There's only gonna be one site, which is the default. I'll do a quick LS, you can see the uh, default. Now I want to basically edit this file. You can use VI or Nano. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna use Nano. I like e using either or. 
You can search, and I'm just gonna scroll down here to the server section. And there's only one change that we need to make as I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Ah, oh, here we go, and scrolling, here we go. All right, back on my notes, you're gonna have to enter OBS Ninja, and that's just basically saying, I want you to go to the OBS Ninja directory. Do a save, and we got one more step before we test this out. Now the last step here is just to restart the Nginx services and then let's open up our OBS Ninja to see if it works. Okay, now that it's restarted, let's test out OBS Ninja. Who's it? Raise your hand that it's gonna work. I really think it will because I've been through this test. All right, you ready? There you go. I have my own OBS Ninja install on AWS and I control it. The real test here is when I go ahead and click add your camera to see if those functionality works. And I'll add my camera and I'll just add my other one, not the GoPro so you can see the quality of that. Hit start. There you go. OBS Ninja works on AWS in a simple, easy install. Let me talk about that last section real quick before we wrap things up here. In the last section, there, you can actually customize the OBS Ninja interface to be more branding for specifically your install. So it doesn't say OBS Ninja. You can say AWS Ninja. That's actually interesting. Going back to the terminal, and I just wanna show a quick LS. If you edit the index.html file, that's really where some of the customizations that come into play and you can change the branding. That's really what I wanted to show about it and the steps to quickly install this. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and the notification button, and stay tuned for more OBS Ninja videos in the future. Until next time.